We've all heard the stereotype that black fathers amongst all other races are the most absent in the lives of their children, thereby making black fathers the poster boys for deadbeat dads. But is there a truth to that stereotype? What constitutes a deadbeat dad? We'll talk about that and much more. Stay tuned to Brothers and Fatherhood Podcast. Welcome to Brothers and Fatherhood Podcast, the show that is by Black Fathers for Black Fathers. I'm Apollo. Today, we're continuing the conversation about stereotypes that the Black Fathers are deadbeat dads. Where does this stereotype come from? Is there some validity to the argument? If so, how can we change the narrative and culture? Today, we have Joe, Alfred, Tedman, and Cleve. Brothers, let's continue the conversation. Uh, I think that's a good thing to know. In life, you grow. So you may have been a deadbeat at, at some point in your life. But when you start to grow, when you know better, you do better. So at some point in time, I even kicked this over there to Cleve and Joe, uh, understanding that Ted, your father was in the picture. Alfred, your father was in the picture. So for you two, you guys had stepfather. So you had a father figure in the mix. For whatever reason, your stepfather and you didn't have the, the best of relationships. The question is, when it comes to having absentee or deadbeat fathers, what costs were associated with having an absentee and deadbeat father? And what costs did you pay in your lives and relationships and growing up? I'll start first, Joe, and I'll let you go next, if you don't mind. Um, I would say the connection. I don't think, even as a stepfather, as a kid, once you've had your dad in your life for just for a smallest amount of time and he leaves, that now to grow a connection, if you don't receive that connection to that stepfather or or whatever role model you have, now you look into the streets for all answers. I'm looking to the streets for girls. I'm looking, so how do I uh, talk to girls? Oh, I see. And, and it's not like I'm going out and asking my friends. I'm watching them. I'm watching the older guys. Oh, man, he said this to her. Oh, so it must be about sleeping with her because my mother could tell me a thousand times, Cleve, don't have sex till you marry. What you talking about? These dudes doing this all over the place. You know what I mean? So how how you going to tell me not to do it when I see nothing but these dudes doing it? And it's the connection that I've never had a father say something like, Cleve, don't have sex before marriage. Cleve, wear a condom. I didn't, I, and if I'm just being completely honest, maybe for the first 10 times I had sex, I didn't wear a condom. You know what I mean? Nobody told me something like this because I didn't have that connection with my dad to go to my stepdad and say, Cleve, can you do this? So now gangbang is a factor. Okay, I got gang members. My cousins is gang members. So I, I never joined the gang, but I, I would say I was affiliated with a gang. If you ever, I, part of the reason I became a Kappa, all red. That's all I ever wear. Most of my stuff is all red. Oh, this fraternity is all red. So in the back, subconsciously, even though I'm an adult, when I'm joining, that that's my fraternity. And then the those pretty dudes, the other ones got all the girls. So they, they, I'm saying I'm using girls a lot because that's what kind of shaped me. This girl doesn't like this, or these girls don't like this. So and then these dudes are doing this for the girls. So that's how I kind of learned. So the effect is of not having it is the connection. I didn't have a connection to someone to say this is how being a man should be or growing up as a man to be a good man or a better man that you should be able to do these things so i think that's the effect that that i want to say not having a dad in the home will bring that that connection to somebody to just explain things and, and that male love it took me a while to even learn how to hug men you know what i mean like i don't hug men i don't that's just not something that i'm geared i was geared to do you know what i mean because you didn't receive it from your stepfather i received it as a kid you know what i mean so now when you do it it's almost i don't want to say in my in my head it's it's homophobic when you do it now so so you didn't you didn't receive any any affection from from your stepfather no none either none zero I'm gonna say zero on that affection. No, we never hugged. Uh, not till not I was at, like high school graduate. Not high school, nothing. Really? You know what I mean. So it would to for me to to get a hug from a man at that age was crazy in, in my in my opinion. You know what I mean. Especially and then you know like a, a real hug is like something that's tight. So if I get a tight hug at at this age, I'm thinking like, hold on, bro, what you doing? You know what I mean? Because right. it's, it's crazy and kisses like. But now, don't get me wrong. I kiss my sons. I hug them tight. 
You know what I mean? I let them know, son, I love you. I try to do things that I guess if, if I, I, I imagine if I had a real father, he would have done. Not a real father, because my stepfather was a real father. I, I, I want to clarify that. He did exactly what he was supposed to do and took in somebody who wasn't his actual born son. So yeah. I'm going to say if I had what, what I expected in my mind to be a real father. So he, he was a decent role model. It, the relationship between exactly. you and him exactly. just wasn't there because you were still holding on to the idea of that, what you had of your actual biological father to be in your life. Exactly. And that's and that kind of caused a rift between me and him when he could have, it could have went there. But as an adult, me and him are tight as, tight and thick as thieves. Okay. Now. So th- that's what I'm saying. So as you grew older, you learned to appreciate what you had in that father figure. So now the relationship between you and him as an adult is a lot son. better. What about you, Joe? Is, is your relationship with your father now? Not going into details, but uh, you, you, you were around enough to, to know my stepfather. My mm-hmm. stepfather probably, I think because I didn't have the father dad, he didn't know how to be a real dad like that, but everything he did and that, that lifestyle he lived, he, you know I mean? He passed it on to me. But when it comes to education, school, teaching me things like, like, you know, uh, changing a tire, uh, learning how to do stuff from Ikea. Like, that's why I don't buy stuff from Ikea. I don't know how to put the shit together. You know what I mean? You know, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, find no, I don't, I don't even, <laughs> I don't do it. My wife does all of that and we, and people make fun of me. She makes fun of me. It's just like, whatever. Cause I didn't learn any of that. I didn't do no Boy Scouts of America, none of that old stuff. So basic stuff, how to look at the stars and tell the time. And I don't know none of that. You know what I mean? Change the tire. I'm calling triple A. What? Yeah, I'm calling uh, <laughs> Ah, oh, come it's, on, it's, man. It's, it's the truth. Because Re- remind you know me the mean? next time I'm in San Francisco, <laughs> we're gonna, so we're gonna have a tutorial time. on how to change a tire. Because this, this is absolutely the wrong. Everybody, man, every man should know how to do that. They should. Is, I was but, grown when I learned how to do that, so yeah. I get it. Oh, <laughs> My dad was there, and he was not like your dad, and yeah. he did not teach me how to change the tire. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> nice. The tire was not my thing. I'm I'm waiting an hour to call AAA. I'm still to this day. Man. What happened? The tire, the tire flat? Oh yeah, get on the phone with AAA because I'm not getting dirty to do that. I don't even know how. Uh, <laughs> but that, that that's spoken like a real capper right there. Like, I'm right. not getting dirty to do all that. Uh, that it's yeah. just embedded now. I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I got two things from Amazon. I just purchased a month ago: a chair and a, a stand and a stand up desk. I purchased it in April. We pushing up on June. It's still in the box. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm going to need you then, to it, read the instructions <laughs> <laughs> and then follow. I mean, it's literally step by step. Ikea, they even make it super duper dummy proof, and they show you where the screwdriver goes and what hole and everything else. <laughs> so there's no reason or excuse for you not to be able to put together an Ikea anything. Yes, I did. I remember I bought a fan one time and thought I had to put it together. It was so hot. <laughs> I put the fan. It was so easy. To, all you had to do was two things. I let the fan sit there for three months. <laughs> Finally, hey. I took it out the box. Like, man, I could have put this together oh, a long time ago. Man, but look, I'm, before I let Alfred go, because look like Alfred's here. Hey, Alfred, you 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 good? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Cleve. Right, yeah. So real quick, just to bring it back good. to kind of what we were talking about when I deal with certain things that I do. I, I, in my head, if, or in the, whatever dad who's listening, father who's listening, if I'm doing something better than I received, in my head, it's all good. So I think some uh, some dads may be like, man, why they call me a deadbeat or an absentee father when I do, I'm doing way better than what I received in the first place. Right. You know what I mean? So it's all going to come back to judgment. Um, on what you receive, because you may think, okay, a, a father is supposed to be here. He's supposed to do this and do this and do this. Well, I only got this. So the other four, this is that you just mentioned, or examples that you just mentioned, I didn't get. So I'm actually being a great father in my head. You know what I mean? So I get, I think it's all a part of it That's is a, internal. Yeah, I think it's it's based on perspective. I think we all have a baseline for what a father's role and responsibility is. And I said it earlier, I think throughout the generations, um, it has changed. The standard has, has, has risen. 
um, the expectation of what we supposed to do with our children and raising our children has, has, has went up. Um, the family, because, and I say, because the family dynamic has changed. Now you have, uh, working, both working parents, if you're going to have a two, two, uh, parent household. Um, so the man is expected to do a lot more than he did back in the day where the man used to be the sole breadwinner. Um, so social economical, uh, situations have changed, making the dynamic of a family structure a little different, making the roles within that family structure different. Even though um, the black community, I want to say, has has changed here in the United States, the stereotype of the the absentee or deadbeat father still holds. Um, now, is that true? We kind of all talked about, hey, we all know at least someone that fits within that category because after we define what a deadbeat dad is, we do know someone that fits into that category. Is it the overall majority? of African-American fathers that have children out there? I would say no. Um, I, I would say there's a growing population, at least the statistics points to it, that there's a growing population of sole fathers, African-American fathers doing the, the sole parenting. And because that is growing, you can make the reasonable argument that fathers are now, black fathers are now more so in the picture than generations past. What that looks like, I don't know. But I think we have to look about changing the narrative right so i, I think alfred said it a, a, a episode or two ago um when you do see a, a black man parenting out there on the streets parenting children you're kind of you people take back and say oh well there's an actual black man fathering you know i think by changing the narrative and having you know uh, conversations and platforms similar to this we can change the narrative like hey black men is our father just like any other father uh, we don't get a special pass just because we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? We're, we're normal. This is the normal. This is the new norm. Just like everybody else, black men are fathers. We are taking care of our children. We are taking care of our responsibilities. And I think it starts by us pushing the new narrative that, hey, look at, look at us. We're doing exactly what we should be doing. Don't give us any extra kudos for doing what we're already supposed to be doing, if that right. makes any sense. Mm hmm I want to wrap up with final thoughts on on deadbeat fathers and and the overall consensus of of this topic where we should go from here understanding that we de define deadbeat fathers what we think about um the black community as deadbeat fathers the black men as deadbeat fathers and or absentee fathers i'll let alfred go first since he's been missing in action uh for most of the episode uh alfred your, your thoughts your final thoughts um my final thoughts is that we just we just got to do better um but at the same time it, it, i don't know if y'all talked about it because i've been going in and out um but a lot of it that um the targets you know the african-american community is just the situation and the, the environment that a lot of us grew up in and because of that environment it tends to lead to you know uh single mother uh, households etc um, so I think it just has to, it has to be one of those things where people just, you know, recognize the, uh, need, try to change that, that narrative. We'll go ahead and Joe, you got any final thoughts? You know, my final thing I would say is that, you know, people think if it, you know, it's a, there's a saying, if there's a will, there's a way. I think that's not true. I think there is a will and there is a way for, especially in this particular case, um, the willpower will will be written on your face to me so if you don't know how to actually be in your in your kid's life if you have that situation to where like cleve said you you looking at this podcast and you like y'all don't know my baby mama my thing is this that willpower is going to be written on your face to where everywhere you go and every person you talk to that's going to be a topic of conversation you're going to figure out you can figure out how to actually do it no matter what um but it does start with with resources like these podcasts, just getting the information. You need to actually be to actually receive the information before you actually make that 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 next step. And I think now more than ever than any time in human history, we have more research sources than we can actually uh, consume. You know, what I mean, yeah. there's more resources out there than you can actually consume. So start with a podcast, start with reading, pick up a book. 
you know, start with a conversation with someone who you who you either look up to or uh, another father. It can just to start, make that start. You have to be able to, uh, you know, come out of your comfort zone and just start the conversation. If the, the willpower, though, will definitely be written on your face. So at some point, if you're talking to somebody, that point, that person should see that something's bothering this guy. I mean, let me ask him, what's up? Are you good? It's just like with us. If something's bothering you, you reach out to another friend of yours to, to, to just get it off your chest. You know what I mean? And then you get another perspective from another person. It may not be what you want to hear, but a lot of times when you get that other perspective, you're like, oh, OK. Then eventually you can drop it. You might call two or three people before you actually can get it to the point where now you're over it. You may have to do that. You know what I mean? If you're just starting from scratch to try to figure out how do you actually go about doing that? So just start with that willpower and start the conversation. Get out of your comfort zone and then just take initiative. All right. All right. So let's go to let's go to Brother Tedman real quick. Final thoughts. My final thought for this particular discussion would be if it's meant to be, it's up to me. You have to be willing to put yourself out there uh, to get that information, to get that knowledge, to get that court time if you can afford it, to get that one-on-one -on -one time with your children if that's the issue that you have. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to stand up for what you, for how you want to be in your parent, in your children's lives. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to say you need to be uh, more involved. They'll say it, but that's, if you don't want to do it, it doesn't matter what they say. It's what you, it's what you want. Um, and it, Another thing is each one teach one. If if somebody's willing to ask for help, then we should be more than willing to give them what they need if, if it's in our ability to do so. A lot of us said early on that it's a community that raises children. Yeah. And it, it's a community that gives information to somebody that's trying to do better. So just you have to be present and we as a community need to be willing to to allow that person to be present. All right. So, Brother Cleve, what do you have? Uh, final final thoughts. Final thoughts. Okay. What I want to say is, I'm as is, is I'm speaking as if I'm talking to somebody who is not in their kids' lives, not inside, or for whatever reason it is. Um, I agree. With, I love what a lot of you guys have had to say, man. Just it's the will. But I want to say it's not too late. You know what I mean? Um, or do it before it is too late, before they become an adult. I mean, I remember as a kid at 16, like, man, I, I wish my dad was here. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't getting along. So what? It's, it's not too late, even if you think it is too late. It's not. Reach out. Become a dude. Like you said, like I, I think it was Apollo said, say I made a mistake. I was wrong. I'm, I need to do it now. I'll do whatever I got to do now. Now I'm here. Secondly, and just so you do know, if you're not doing it, you're not being that dad you need to be, you're cheating the kid, but you don't even understand how you're cheating yourself. Some of my best moments in my life now, I used to play football. I don't know if you guys know I played college football too. Um, mm -hmm. Any touchdown I've ever scored, when my sons score a touchdown, that touchdown that I scored means absolutely nothing. It, 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 it pales in comparison to how the pride that I feel when I see my son do something that I taught him to do or something like that. So you're actually really cheating yourself if you are not being involved in your kids' lives because it, it gives you some of the best gratifying moments that you could even imagine. So I do want to say that. And then I want to ask a question when we stop recording of you guys about solutions, because I would I would like to know how we, you should address some of the friends in your lives, in our lives that are. And I want to know that, um, that are deadbeats. And I want to know if cutting them off, like letting them know, bro, I got I to gotta disassociate just myself with you as much as I love you because you're not handling business 
as a man? Does it does it reflect on you to still be that man's friend? So that's what I want to ask and talk to you guys about after recording the done, if you have time. If not, yeah. we'll talk about it another day. But yeah. that's my final thoughts, man. I love everybody. Thank you again for having me. No, we'll definitely talk about that. It's probably going to cut. I'll say my final thoughts and, and leave uh, Alfred with the final uh, wrap up. Um, so there are uh, my final thought would be um, it's not a right. It's it's a privilege to be called dad. So I think any man that donates his sperm can be a f- technically a father of a child. I think it's, it's a, a special character that you own your responsibilities and and you do your part and you can be called dad. So what does that mean? It means that you have to earn it from day to day. It's a job. Every day you're doing work. You come home from your other job or whatever, whatnot that you're working at. You have a job. You have responsibilities to to take care of as a father. So I think it, it's a continual thing that you have to live and learn. Um, but by by no means is it going to be easy. It's going to be rough patches ahead. There's going to be sick days. It's going to be all this other stuff. You can't call out from being a father like you could for your traditional job. So if you need to charge ahead and figure out a way so that you are in the life and you're, you're present in your children's life, by all means, it is your role and responsibility. It's your duty. It's one of your duties within your job description as a, as a father, as a dad, in order to make happen. So I, I can't see, I can't fathom the reason why gentlemen aren't or, or, or men aren't in a part of their, or their children's lives. To me, it's non-negotiable uh, as, a, as a father that, hey, I have signed up for a, a lifelong roller coaster, which is called parenthood. So you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs, but at the end of the day, you have to do what you, you need to do uh, for, those, for those children. And I'll leave it at that. Go ahead, Alfred. My final thoughts is I just say we just got to do better um, as a people, as a community, as a whole. Um, and if we see people in those situations, our individuals in those situations, I think we got to take a charge on ourselves and say, hey, if I can be a part of this uh, individual's life, I'm talking about young black men, if I can be a part of them life, even if it's just saying, hey, young man, how you doing or how, you know, school going or how you feeling, just something. So that way, them growing up in that single parent family household without a male figure, it'll give them something to aspire to be. So that way, when they get into position and them having kids, that they will want to have a different mindset uh, than than they have been accustomed to or they have grown uh, grown up in being in that situation of without being having a father. Um, and I think Joe had mentioned earlier how you know he had a mentor, uh, Mr. Stingley. Uh, and because he saw how he was raising his family, he took a charge of himself. He like, this is how I want to be when I have kids one day. And uh, that's why I say if, if we have that opportunity to do so, I think we need to to implement that and to step up. Uh, we just got to do better. Uh, and then, you know, just just people, I mean, we just got to take more responsibility. Um, if you do the do, you just got to, you know, step up and, and be that man and, and be a part of that child's life, uh, no matter how difficult it may be, because um, it definitely will make that child, you know, a better person uh, in the future. Yeah, I think I think you hit it right on the head, Alfred. I mean, you have to my idea of being a man is only your responsibilities. Right. So that's a that, that's a part of manhood. So just being a, a man and owning up to your responsibilities. You, you put yourself in that position, whether you intended to or not. Now you have a child and now it's time for you to step up and be a man and, and own your responsibilities. So exactly. I'll leave you with today's dad quote. Today's dad quote I found randomly on Pinterest.com. It reads deadbeat dads. If you don't spend any time with your kids when they are young, don't be surprised when they don't want to spend time with you when they're old enough to see what kind of parent you are. Author unknown. Make sure you join our Facebook group, Brothers in Fatherhood. Follow us on Instagram at Brothers, the letter N, Fatherhood. And on Twitter at Bros, the letter N, Fatherhood. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Brothers in Fatherhood. Thanks for listening to the Brothers in Fatherhood podcast. Before we go... 
Show some love for your favorite new podcast by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. Then stay tuned for next week when we'll discuss a special Father's Day episode that you can't miss. We love to hear from you. Drop the Brotherhood a line. If you have a subject you want us to tackle or you just want your voice to be heard, please send all questions or comments to the Brotherhood at brothersinfatherhood at gmail.com. Stay blessed. Stay safe.